All right, I'm gonna start first with the walk around video. You can see how purple it is next to the Bayside blue. It really makes that purple instead of like a true blue pop. But as you can see, just going around the car, I mean, it has its uh, fair share of, um, how can I call it? Uh, I'll get to it, but I mean, you can see right here, the difference in the blue to that fender is more purple, but like by itself, like this paint looks really good. It's just, it really doesn't match between the two. So I'll go um, case by case with the exterior itself. All right, it's actually the next day. I, I did the walk around video and then all of a sudden people came in talking on their phones and it was loud. So I had to uh, wait. Now it's early in the morning, nobody's here yet, but the sun's a little different. So show you a little bit about the shop. R33 Alltech. This car is going to Canada. A couple Ferraris. Older manual Porsche Carrera S. GT4 RS. Go to the front of this, it's pretty sweet. We got this gold bear. His Santa suit fell off. Merry Christmas. We just got this last night. It's really nice. I'll do some sort of video later on that. Looks like a bass boat. That's going to the client today. Yeah, anyways, back to the Supra, which is why we're here. All right, I showed you the walk around video. Um, I've had the car for, uh, I think, well, over a week, I guess, almost two weeks. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of familiar with what it has. I pointed out quickly that if you look at, uh, the lighting is bad now, but if you look at the front bumper, though the paint is really nice, uh, there's, there is nothing wrong with this paint at all, but from here, this looks like a purple paint with a blue flake, and this, excuse me, this looks like blue paint with a purple flake. So, I mean, you can, you can see the difference right there. I mean, it's not bad, but um, somebody like me that looks at paint all the time, um, I see that. Um, I'll show you one other thing in the back when we get to that. All right, I, I wanna say that this bumper is a top secret bumper, if I remember the ad correctly. Um, don't quote me or blast me online if it's not. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure the, the client that bought it does wanna put a stock bumper on it, but um, I'm sure this is a really expensive bumper for what it's worth. Uh, biggest flaw is the rock chips. I mean, it's got a huge, a huge nose. I mean, I'm sure whoever drove the Supra probably drove it fast. Um, I, mean, I don't know where you would get so many rock chips personally. I don't get them, but I only take the highway. So my, my thought is if I see a car that has, I mean, this has like a bug on it. Um, my thought is if there's a car with many rock chips, they got it at the track. I mean, that's just my thinking. I'm not saying this car was tracked at all. Nothing shows that it was, unless it was a weekend thing. But yeah, there's no cracks or splintering in the front bumper. Um, because it's so open, you can see like the wires and stuff kind of hang in there. Um, kind of an eyesore. Like if it was me, I would have like some sort of grill there to protect. And uh, if it has a big front mount, it'd be really, really nice, but it doesn't, not yet at least. Alright, and the hood. One thing about the hood is I do, uh, I do see the paint is amazing, but I do see, oh, uh, you can catch it in the light over here, tiny, 
like clear bubbles, I think. You can see it all wherever the light is. You know what? I think that's just my mind playing tricks on me. I think that's just heavy flake to where when you see it, it disappears. Yeah. I think those are just heavy flakes. Um, little spot there. Other than that, I mean, the water runs right off the body. And there's a couple of long scratches here and right here. It can probably be polished out, but I don't really want to polish it because the paint already looks so good. Right, moving on. Fender. All down the body on this side is completely smooth. Um, I do see, I say completely smooth, but if you want to be really picky about it, um, Right in here, you can see where there's a wave right there. Looks like maybe a door ding was repaired, maybe pulled. And super small, but right here. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, you can get the reflection on the Bentega. I'll take that any day over a big crease, rear quarter, the side skirts. What's this? Wax. Yeah, so the previous seller did wax the car. Now, one thing I believe is this. It, this is red. I mean, the light's kind of weird. Like, if you looked at the front, I mean, the orange is orange, but it's got orange marker in the front and a red rear marker. I believe this is United States spec. I don't think um, Japanese cars came with the red in the back. All right. Rear bumper. There's some paint blemishes all here I'm not exactly sure what would cause that and there's a scratch that looks like a cat maybe tried to jump on the car and scratched it down I mean I don't see scratches up here there's some paint blemishes here that part of the car is probably the worst of it and that's not bad at all. I like this gray super emblem. You know, matches the tails. Obviously, you know, an iconic part of the car. But again, there's no pressure cracks or anything that shows it's been tapped. Um, down this side of the car as well. I don't see any sort of blemishes that need to be pointed out. Now, something about here, I don't know if this light's gonna show me, but outside you can really tell. You have the rear fender with the spoiler, the bumper, and this spat. In the light, this is three different blues here. You have a very purple blue, you have a purplish blue, and then yeah, sorry about that. My uh, phone actually ran out of space. Um, and then you have a very blue blue uh, inside it in this light in the yellow light. You really can't see those three colors I was mentioning. Um, but then going down the side of the car, just like the passenger side, no damage on the side skirt, no dents on the door, the paints in really good condition and roof. All of the trim too is very smooth. Uh, there's nothing except even on the, like I don't know if this has been replaced versus this, where this looks a little chewed up. Um, passenger side also has the same thing, but other than that, I mean, the paint just feels amazing. Mirrors, I'm not sure what this is here. I don't want to run my finger over it, but uh, 
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what would have caused that. And again, fender is very good. Wipers. Maybe a little bit of rock chips. And that's kind of maybe a dried water. Rear window has a tint that's not exactly done well. Another look at the spoiler. Outside is a nine out of ten. Cold start. I like that. Engine fires right up. Clutch feels good. I have the driving video. Um, automatic to, tran to manual transmission swap. Uh, factory um, transmission used. So it's very clean. Um, it doesn't look out of place or, you know, no large truck style shifter that shows it was abused. I mean, all around the car, the, I mean, I'll get into the, um, interior video in a bit, but other than that, everything sounds good. Pop the hood. All right, engine running. Sounds like brand new. Nothing out of the ordinary, no, no belts are squealing. The previous customer took really good care of this car, um, even to, to the muffler. It's a street legal muffler. So it's got a very deep tone, but there's nothing, uh, you know, wild or crazy about the sound. It's got, you know, the factory mid pipe. I, I, don't, I don't know much about Supra. I mean, I assume they have a mid pipe and the, um, the catalyzer or downpipe is factory as well, so it doesn't rattle the windows when you fire up the engine. But it's got an HKS intake. The factory air box is in the trunk. Well, everything in here sounds good. have the engine running uh, the radio is on I haven't yeah, the radio works navigation I assume works if you want to know where my shop is and you can read Japanese there it is uh, temperature uh, that's the heat it is a cold day not so cold um, 11 degrees but the heat came on immediately Switch to the air conditioner. That switched to cold right away, so that is working 100%. It's actually really cold. Turn that off. Boost gauge working. RPMs fine. That light there is the e brake light, and the door is on open. Yeah, so no warning. It does have the, um, you can't see it well, but it does have 
actually, if I turn on the lights, I think, yeah. It's got the automatic gauge still, but if you put it in reverse, it goes in reverse. It's pretty cool. Um, speed meter, kilometers an hour. Um, I believe it's like you can hold the settings. Nah. Have to take a gas is good. Let me turn that down. I'll do an electronics check. All right, headlights on. I will turn on the, wait for that person to go so they don't think I'm flashing at them. I'll turn on the high beams. I'll turn on the four ways. Door wing. Horn works fine. Rear tail blinker, tail blinker, rear marker. Front marker, blinker, high beam headlight, high beam headlight, marker, or blinker and marker, all in working order. Now, um, one thing I did notice is, I'll show you with the uh, key first because that's more noticeable, it's the trunk latch. If I do it with the key, I mean, how often are you gonna do it with the key? I I'm not sure. I mean, I assume it's easier if you're already outside, but the key doesn't pop the trunk enough. I don't know. The workings of it, I'm not sure why that would be, but if you use the latch, then it opens with no problem. I said that and then it didn't. Hold on. Hmm. Try the key again. This box is causing it to be jammed up. All right, I'm gonna pause the video and try to figure it out. All right, I just shut the trunk. Now I'm going to only use the latch versus the key. And now you can hear it. I mean, that pops. So I don't know why, you know, it doesn't work with just the just the key doesn't give it enough spring I guess to make this pop open I don't know the uh, exact dealings but um, yeah so if you use the latch it pops it fine gas tank pop I've never tried this yet hopefully it works yeah that worked fine All right, work wheels. This is driver's side front. We cleaned it yesterday. The inside was really rusted. I, I believe it does need some uh, brake pads. No damage on the front, but the rear does have some curb marks which have been um, hit with touch-up paint to kind of hide. But the face is very clean still. 
It's got these long bolts, but not on all of them. All right, passenger side rear. Again, a little curb mark, some curb marks. That is a chip. Passenger front is very curved here and around here. But the face is in overall good condition. Um, another chip here. Down there is a curb. And then these bolts are not as long as the other side. So what it does, those bolts stick out, these bolts don't, so it actually makes this wheel look like it, what would it be, convex? The concave, the opposite of concave? <laughs> but it's the same wheel. All right, the Super 2JZ engine, um, just the HKS intake is in the, Blitz coils, you can see Cusco. Now, it doesn't really matter, but I'm not sure why the Cusco bar is reversed. To me, that's kind of annoying. I'll probably swap that out if I have time for the client. Um, this is the first Supra that I have inspected. So I can't say, oh, this looks weird. Yeah, I have nothing to compare it to. But from what I've seen on other pictures, I mean, it's really clean. I did try to do some research before we purchased it. When I inspected it the first time for the client, when he agreed that it's a nice car. You know, nothing in here looks like it's out of place. We have the factory box. Um, missing the... Uh, what is this? insulation in here the factory radiator you know, all the lighting is bad but all that's just dirt down there I cleaned up the struts it had a little bit of like dusty dirt on it it's got the factory intercooler so the piping you know this looks quite ugly right there one of the first mods I would do is a front mount Heat shield is still in working order. All of the brackets, um, nothing's rusted out. I mean, this car shows no sign of rust at all. It was really cared for. And I had the engine running video, there's no sounds. Pretty much one of the best cars I've ever sourced in my eyes. Not that I'm a huge super fan. I do drive a Supra, but not this style. I'll try to do the best I can with the lighting. For the kilometers, I mean, it's not exactly a low kilometer car, but it looks like a low kilometer car. I mean, whoever drove this car really, really cared for it. Like, I, I don't even have anything to talk about, really. I'll just kind of go around. <laughs> the super seats are crazy. I mean, this design is just wild. It's so tacky, but it works. Rear seats as well. Sitting in the car. Now, something I do notice is that It has carbon fiber here, here, and here. And when you're driving, this feels so good. But I don't think that's factory. Like it's the factory wheel, but I think it was maybe repaired. Maybe it was really bald here or something. I'm not sure, but I could be completely wrong. These could be factory, but I've never seen it. That's the boost gauge. I mean, everything is so mint. I told the client, this car is actually going to Okinawa for a service member. 
I was like, if it doesn't work out, tell me I want it. Mm. It's got a little bit of a raise there and there and here. And from what I've seen on most super videos or pictures, they all have this. Like I can almost stick my finger in there. So I was like, well, maybe the gauge was swapped, but I've seen most of them just warp here. The factory mats still in good shape. This one, from what I saw, was a little bit more brown on the driver's side in here, but I mean, if it's steam cleaned, it would probably come right up. Oh, there is a little, well, for me, it, it's quite, I wouldn't say heavy, but quite noticeable um, tobacco smell. I don't, you know, it doesn't look like, I mean, this looks like it's been hit once or twice. So I don't think it was heavy smoked in, but it hasn't gone away if somebody did smoke in it. All right, this car is so awesome. Maybe one day it'll be mine.